who wants to start us in evening prayer. And once again, we thank you all for, for joining and taking time out of your busy schedules to deliberately be here when you could have been anywhere else. So we thank you again and we honor and we bow to you. All right, who wants to kick us off? Anyone? Anyone? <laughs> Heavenly Father, we thank you. We love you. We adore you. We thank you once again for this evening that you bless us in. We thank you for your hedge of protection around us. We thank you as we open up our hearts and minds to receive this word by love and by faith. We apply into our lives and take it to a world that is good, holy, and beautiful, for that is the essence of our being. We thank you for using us for signs, wonders, and miracles, our gift and our talents. We thank you for blessing us with health, wealth, abundance, prosperity. We thank you for not giving us fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. And we thank you for you doing all the things. This is our prayer that we offer up to you. Amen, amen, and amen. Amen. And all right. Praise report testimonies by the ways. What do we got? Anyone? I am seeing all the rep repetitive numbers <laughs> for the past few days. And, and I'm just noticing it more and more often that I see I see while I'm playing games, surprisingly, while, uh -huh. while I'm in the streets, mm -hmm. while I'm driving, while I'm texting, and even while I'm just talking to people. And they were like, and, 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 and it's odd because I was just this morning, I was talking to one of my colleagues, Darwin, and he was, he, we were just chatting. And then he took a glance at his watch and he was like, huh, interesting. And I was like, wait, what is it? It's like, hey, it's 11, 11 right now. And then he continued on. And I was like, I can't believe he just told me what it was. But okay, <laughs> that works too. So it's, it's, it's been good. I've been feeling very positive. Yeah. And I'm seeing a lot of, things that I requested to show up, like show signs that it's coming. I don't know if it's true or not, but it feels like it's coming. Oh, so. it's true. It's true. Well, think about it. Why would Darwin out of nowhere, who have never, ever done that the whole time you've known him, stop out of nowhere and announce that time? Yeah. Divine. Gotta love it. Can't make this stuff up. In other words, we, remember yesterday we were talking about the messengers? Mm -hmm. well, even our messengers. Mm -hmm. Sometimes when we get so busy and focused, even in the games, all of or in conversation, it's the, here we are. We're just here to let you know we're here. <laughs> you have assistance. And then it's also saying, hey, it's on the way. Your prayers have been answered. Hold fast. Keep, keep in the place that you're in. Don't let that, don't let that go. In other words, enjoy it. Matter of fact, every number that comes up, research it, find out what it means to you. Mm -hmm. Have fun with it, man. Absolutely. The more, you know, the more you grow, the more you grow, the more you show. Mm -hmm. just bring that up. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you for that. Absolutely. Um, my next hurdle is just being patient i should say yes. yeah not 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 asking oh it's already here when is it kind of deal because sometimes it goes back to that mindset again uh, uh -huh. and 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 i've been trying my best to catch myself not not to ask when whenever mm -hmm. i see those things yeah we would give you in the new testament the book of galatians and it's called the fruit of the spirit and the fruit of the spirit is love joy peace, long-suffering, meekness, gentle, goodness, faithful, and temperance. And within those is what you just said, is patience. But if you notice the sequence of how it goes, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, which is the, the patience, where do you have to start in? Where love. you're at now, the love. The love, because you love Darwin giving you the number. And, it, and he was so nonchalant about it. Oh, it's 11-11, then he kept talking. Yeah. I gave you your message. Keep moving. It was like he was in a moment for a second in a trance. <laughs> he didn't even realize it. 11-11. Ah, okay. And he keeps talking like nothing happened. <laughs> and yep. you're going, you realize what you just said? Like, why did you just... But you yep. kept it... Yeah. <laughs> That's the beauty. That is the blessing and the gift of God. It only gets better and better. And remember, we told you the dates. This is part of the dates. When we told you about December 21st and also the 22nd and the 20, year 22 and 24, these are the things that you experience, the goodness. This is the bliss. This is, 
This is when it gets fun. Thank you for that. Any other testimony, praise reports? All right, we all good. I passed my violin. Yay! One for <laughs> I've been struggling with one of them and I finally got it. So I was in third position. She wants to go to second position. I said, no, not yet. She said, you're ready. I said, no. <laughs> all righty. So we're on page 755. Get your snacks, get your drinks, get your <coughs> notebooks, get your pens, all that. <clears throat> the title of this evening is If You Would Know Love, Know Yourself. If You Would Know Love, Know Yourself. There was an, I believe, and I, I'm a, probably misquoted, but you've all heard it. Know thyself. Has anyone heard that proverb? Yes. Well, when you begin to explore what that really means in terms of knowing yourself, in order to learn to know yourself, you have to love thyself first, because when you understand the greater is he who is in me than he who is in the world, we're talking about unconditional love as the greater he in me. Yes. So now once I get to know me and who is in me as the love, now I get to know myself. So you often hear us say, we're here to help you what? Remember who you are. When you begin to know yourself, you remember who you are. And then you begin to answer your own questions on, why am I here? Why was I sent here? What is my life purpose? Those questions that you've asked at one point in time or even thought, then those answers begin to come to you. But you would be surprised on how many people don't know themselves, let alone love themselves. And then will fight you tooth and nail on them not loving themselves or them loving themselves when you can clearly see that they don't love themselves. And perhaps we have been in that same situation where we weren't loving ourselves. And I will speak for me. I was in a place where I wasn't loving me like I thought I should have been loved. And the ego was trying to love me. Does that make sense? So, question number one. How do you know love? Because everybody has different definitions of love. You'll have someone who is in an abusive relationship, and it may be physical, it may be mental, it may be verbal. But within that relationship, however it is, the person who is the victim or perceived to be the victim won't leave the relationship. And then when is confronted about the abuse, they will try to justify that other person's position on why they're being abused. Mm -hmm. They will take the blame. Oh, it was me that I, I shouldn't have did this. And oh, he just, he loves me. And he, the, if you were to ask them about love, this is what they would define as love. So now we'll go up the spectrum a little bit where you'll have a man, woman, married, and then most typically it'll be the man who decides, hey, he wants to step out of the relationship and have a mistress. And then it'll be the blame game. It'll be that type of, oh, when he gets caught, oh, don't leave me. I love you. I love you. me. <laughs> <laughs> right, we've seen that and they try to justify why not leaving with the love and oftentimes they might say or whatever I was that person I, I'm speaking from first hand experience where I had to really evaluate self and say why did self do that because self was not loving self so how could I love another if I'm not loving self mm -hmm. so now there was a song by a famous country western writer who wrote a song that says looking for love in all the wrong places, the wrong places. <laughs> <laughs> and I was looking for love in all the wrong places and I had to learn to love myself so when you really start looking at the word love 
especially when it comes to God and unconditional love, you would be surprised how many people would put a stipulation on the unconditional love of God and have some type of judgment, torment, separation, whatever, and try to call that love. And we go, wait a minute, unconditional love loves you exactly where you are, regardless of how you're thinking, regardless of how you're behaving, unconditional love of God knows you because he created you. So why would he punish you or judge you harshly with unconditional love? <coughs> because to <coughs> anything outside of that would be a condition, would it not? Mm -hmm. That would be judgment. So now you can't say, oh, God is a unconditional loving God with all these conditions. It doesn't work that way. He says, you cannot serve two masters. You either love one or hate the other. Which one is it? Yeah. Which one am I? Which one are you guys going to serve? Which one? Am I the loving God or am I this, this other God who is vengeful? Because at the end of the day, he says, I change not. I'm the same today, yesterday, and what? Forever. So now all of a sudden, where does the change come? And normally it's because the man changed, not understanding the unconditional love of God because we see how people behave and we swear up and down they're in sin and they're going to go to hell. God is going to bring vengeance on them. And we go, but how is that unconditional love? So then people have to wrestle with it. And then because they've been taught in religion about that, they have to justify that. And then they miss out on the unconditional love of God. And we go, wait a minute, didn't God forgive you when you was in your mess? Well, yeah, but I'm saved now. I found this and I found that and I'm in the right church and I'm in the right religion. Now they condemn everybody else because now self-righteousness and then they define that as what? Love. Oh, I love everybody. But if you ain't part of this church or this religion or this organization, you lost. How many have heard that? Yeah. People will say, if you're in the Buddhist religion, oh, that's not Christianity. The only way, and they will fight you about that. If you are a Muslim and you say Allah, they will, oh, you're lost if it's not Christianity or, and vice versa. Mm -hmm. You understand how the confusion is? But when you really look at what the master said, when Jesus came, he said, this message that I bring is for the Jew first and also for the Greek. But people forgot for God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son. God loved us so much that he sent us the messenger to teach us unconditional love and to bring us back into relationship with the father of love. Does that make sense? Yes. So now when we look at question number one, how do you know love? I know love because God meets me right where I'm at with all my flaws, because guess what? He's the one who can clean me up. He's the one can correct the error of my wrong thinking to get me into right thinking. That is the job of the Holy Spirit. So when you all proclaim, Holy Spirit, what can I do to soothe my brother or sister's broken heart? You are actually defining how do I love? Because they're going to get encompassed with comfort, which is what? Love. Holy Spirit is comforter and teacher. Does that make sense? Now, when people are not loving themselves, now you will be able to help them love themselves because you will learn to love yourself. Every morning, how many of you tell yourself you love yourselves in the morning? <laughs> All right. If you don't, you better start. Uh -huh. <laughs> tell yourself you're the best looking thing, handsomest thing, sexiest thing. <laughs> All of that, you put yourself, all of, give yourself a crown or whatever, make yourself feel good because if you don't make yourself good, nobody else is gonna make you feel good. And that is the truth. Question number two, how do you know yourself? You ask people, why were you sitting here or why you, were you put in this situation? What do you think the normal response will be? They will give you their, if you ask people, who are you in terms of describing who they are, they will give you their name, their date of birth, 
and their place of location. <clears throat> the culture, they might tell you the religion or whatever, but they're going to give you those three things of who they are. But then when we say, well, who are you as a child of God? Who are you as God? Oh, no, I'm mm -mm, no. I, now all of a sudden there's something lesser than than in the image and the likeness of the creator. Does that make sense? Yes. A lot of people don't know who themselves are as Christ incarnate. And this is why many don't have the mind of Christ. A lot of you had the same issue when I said, hey, you are God. How many of you still quenched to this very day when I tell you that? Be honest. Be honest. Yes, it's still to this core. You still quench. Oh, pastor, don't make me say it. <laughs> Not the big G, the little G, maybe nothing at all. Come on, don't, don't elevate me like that. Can I try it? Absolutely. I am God. I am God. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Didn't that feel good? Man, I almost ran up out of here. Y'all lucky I'm, I'm strapped down to my chair. <laughs> Actually, Pastor, okay. This is, uh, yesterday we learned about faith, right? Mm -hmm. uh, we learned about that. I mean, the knowing. Absolutely. Yesterday we learned about the knowing. So today I practiced that. Mm. Okay. So I realized that my doubts is coming for not trusting it. Yes. So now that I I practice the knowing, you know, uh, yeah, the days gets better. Yes, because now you, you know. So now we don't doubt it. I I have uh, slowly my doubt is disappearing. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh. Uh. Before, when I pray for somebody, I will have to know whether that person is going to get better or whether the person is going to receive it or not, you know? Yeah. Uh, but now, yeah. That's, see, now what you're doing is you're loving yourself. <laughs> because in order to have step two, and Melissa said it best, she had to let go of doubt. When you are in doubt, you're not trusting step two. Step two will be almost impossible to happen because of doubt, because of fear, because of worry, because of lack. Mm -hmm. Anthony is freer than everybody on that screen right now. His 11.5 billion just hit his pockets. <laughs> 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 Absolutely. The master said this in the New Testament, in the scriptures. He says he did not think it to be robbery to be equal with God. He says, the works that I do, you shall do too and greater works because I am your elder brother. In other words, for God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son because he was here to teach you and to save you. The saving part was to save you from the separation of God. Does that make sense? Yes. So now when you start looking in your New Testament and all through your your schools, even in the Buddhist Hinduism, it always comes back to the enlightenment. The Buddha and focused on the enlightenment. Allah, Muhammad, focused on the enlightenment. Christ, meaning anointed one, focused on the enlightenment. And then you have me, who came to focus on the enlightenment. And mm -hmm. now you are focusing on the what? Enlightenment. Why? Because you love yourself. So now when you know yourself, you can boldly say, you know what? I was in doubt. And it was okay for me to be in doubt, but now I'm not in doubt anymore. When I pray for this person for healing, I'm not going to worry about it because that's not my job. Because at the end of the day, you don't know what they're praying. You know how many people pray to die while you're praying for them to leave? Mm -hmm. Now there's a conflict of prayer. Yeah. So I have to say, hey, what are we praying for? Got one soon? <laughs> You pick the occasion, funeral wedding. <laughs> All right, question number three. What does loving yourself mean? It is a combination of one and two. When you know love and you know yourself, then you automatically know what it means to love yourself. Loving yourself means that if you are single, like I once was before I was married, I had to learn to one, be comfortable being by myself without anybody. 
I had to learn to take myself to the favorite restaurant and date myself. And <laughs> San, I'd have a, I'm telling you, I would have a candlelight dinner by myself and date myself <laughs> and act like it was another person there to date with and have a grand old time. And people thought I was nuts. <laughs> what I was doing was I was creating the wife. Mm. Y'all get that? Mm. I had to go through everything I would do with this person, and enjoy it, but I had to enjoy it first with myself. Mm. I'd go to the movies and watch a romantic movie by myself and hold myself. <laughs> 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 I hugged myself when I cried at the movie. I had to be, I had to love me. Share popcorn with myself. <laughs> yes, Lily. Um, I used to, I just remember that I used to, um, I started picking up shopping mm -hmm. because I used that time to, to enjoy by myself. Well, not many people want to go shopping, right? So I, I can go out and spend the whole day walking to every right. stores, every shops, looking at everything by myself for a day. Right. And enjoy it. You learn to love the time of getting to know yourself without another. When you really know to love yourself, friendship goes to a whole nother level. When you start seeing them as what I was telling you as a gift, but it's the enjoyment of watching every person, every price tag, every label, every salesperson, every smell of the purses and the leather in the store, because every store has a different smell, does it not? Mm -hmm. Every store has a different energy. Every store has a different vibration. So when you begin to love in yourself, you understand what that means. Does that make sense? So, yes. And I tell people, go ahead, Lily. And then later, the, the universe will send me companions like yes. Melissa. Yeah. Ah. Keep up with me. <laughs> yep. Think, not only just a companion, a sister. Oh, yes. <laughs> Here's the sister you never had, never wanted, but here she is. True. <laughs> and that's, and, and, that was, you did the same thing. You learn to be alone first to enjoy self. That when another comes, they don't shake you, and you don't have to. Oh, I have to always do what you say, and we have to go here. And sometimes those friendships are very strained based on dominance. Mm -hmm. One wants to be the leader in the friendship instead of just, hey, there's no leader. We're just both friends. Mm -hmm. We can mutually agree. We can mutually disagree, and still be. And it's okay. Mm -hmm. Question number four. How many of you have been taught to try to love, to try to do the right thing, the good thing? Too many. Too many times. Too many times. We're not going to give you the answer because the answer is in the question, but we're going to get deeper into that question. Question number five. What is the truth that will make you free? You've all, how many of you have heard that in the scriptures? Mm-hmm. So we we won't give you the answer now, but we will get more into that. And we we actually told you that answer a few. Does anybody remember? No? All right. Well, we'll give it to you again. This time it will stick, we promise. All well, right. That one, is, that one is what is the truth that will make you free? And that is your truth. True to what? True of your truth. True to self. Yeah. True to self. yeah. And then the, the real truth is only God is real. Hmm. Only God, that is the truth that once you realize only God is real, God is love, that is the truth that makes you free. Now it takes the pressure off of you. Because now everything that can God, let me ask you a question. Can God lie? No. no. So now once you align yourself with God, now this is the truth. God is the truth that will make you what? Free. Free. 
Where is God? In me. Mm -hmm. Who are you? God. God. So now, once you acknowledge, I am this, this is the truth that will make me free. Oh. You, you got to remember, when the Bible was written, and even in, when the Bible was written, and when the master came to teach, the reason why he taught in the parables was he wanted them to figure it out. He wanted them to use their conscience. With the disciples, he didn't have that much time. So he said them to them, it is going to be known to you. We're going to give it to you. But for them, they're going to have to figure it out. It's a mystery. It's a parable. Mm -hmm. Okay. And we'll get more into what is the truth that will make you free. Your affirmation. Love can only be welcome where love truly resides. Yes. All right. In truth, there is a place within you that you all that you that yeah. in truth there is a place within you that already knows the day and the hour. You already know when you are going to decide to live the decision to be awakened in God, to be only the presence of love. Love embraces all things, allows all things, trusts all things, and thereby transcends all things. Love is never possessive. Love is never fearful. Love is simply love. Love cannot shine without specialness upon anyone at any time. For specialness itself, person, only on one being, only within one universe. Therefore, whenever you recognize that you have singled someone or something out and said they hold a greater value, you may rest assured that you are not in love at all. Quite opposite, you're in fear. And if that one were to leave you, where would you be? But if you are in love as a fish within the sea, all beings can arise and pass away, and you will bless them on their journey. So when people croak, I rejoice, and I bless that spirit on its journey, and everybody goes, Pastor, you're not compassionate. How dare you say he croaked and died? And I said, well, he did. So you want to bring him back? Well, I don't know how. We didn't let him stay dead then. <laughs> we, we are not a respecter of people. So to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And we told you the other day, not one tear is shed when you croak. It's quite opposite. Everybody in heaven that you know it rejoices. Mm -hmm. Everybody. Mm -hmm. You remember that you reside where God has placed you in her heart. Greater is he who is in me than he who is in the world. God looks upon your walk, your heart. Your heart is where you create your desires. So this is where you get your manifestations from. This is where you get your answered prayers from. But if you don't know who you are and you don't reside in love, then it's very difficult for God to bless you with those things you're wanting because you're not in love. Make sense? Mm -hmm. when you choose to be only the presence of love even the dream of loss will dissolve from your consciousness as a forest mist before the rising sun in other words people who perceive themselves as lacking in terms of finance or relationship or um, health or whatever the case once they get into really knowing unconditional love then that illusion will dissolve from their mind Indeed, beloved ascended masters, love does wait upon your welcome. You cannot welcome love by waiting for it to be brought to you by another, not even by Christ. You cannot welcome love by trying to scurry about to create the environment in which you believe your presence are being met. You cannot welcome love when that welcome is attached or linked to any phenomenal thing, anything that has been birthed in time. Love can only be welcome where love truly what? Resides. Once you really understand who resides in you, man, that is liberating. And love resides within you as the core and the source of your every very being. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. yeah. Therefore, if you would know love, know yourself. Embrace the truth about it and the truth will what 
set you free. So now, what is the truth that will set you free? If you would know love, you would know yourself. Greater is he who is in me. Who is God? God is love. So now who are you? You are love. Make sense? Yes. So when you say, I am love, what are you really saying? Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Why, why are you saying so softly? <laughs> 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 Why are you say so softly? Yeah, no. Say it loud, say it proud. <laughs> I am hey, not ashamed of the gospel. <laughs> <laughs> See, that was very subtle, but we're glad she said it. <laughs> Liberating, isn't it? Freedom. This is the this is the truth that will make you free. Then indeed, love will flow through you like the great sunlight that comes to nurture this beloved earth. The love that flows through you will be unimpeded. It will not meet any obstacles, any resistance whatsoever. You will look upon whomever is in front of you and you will know that they are sent unto you of who? The Father. Why? They're the gift. The gift of what? Love. Why? Because they too are who? God. Yes! <laughs> they just don't realize it. <laughs> they just don't realize it. <laughs> oh, yes. Well, we're going to get there sooner. We're going to get there sooner than later, I promise you. <laughs> <laughs> we so. see them like, oh, you're so ignorant. <laughs> yeah, and they don't know it. Yeah. All you've forgotten. I'll tell you the truth. It took me a year to acknowledge that, to be truthful. I wrestled with it, I wrestled with it, I wrestled with it. I searched, I Googled, I YouTubed, I Webstered, I thesaurus it, I meditated, everything for one year. And I kept coming up with the same answer. I, I had no other option other than indeed. Indeed. <laughs> indeed. Uh, but actually, uh, for me, Pastor, uh, once you continue to say that we are God, we are God, you know, but once you uh, own it, mm -hmm. you see your creation flourish. Yes, you do. Because you understand. Here's <clears throat> what we're saying. We're not saying put yourself on the throne. Mm. We're not saying put yourself above the creator because you know that you do not create yourself but you have the freedom of the mind of God to create any experience you want. What he wants is for you to create joy and bliss. But if you choose to create separation, you're going to get that. And he's still going to love you the same. That's the blessing. That makes sense? Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit has guided you to become who you given in a way that begins to touch the place of their awakening. So every person, remember we always say you plant the seeds? Yeah. So when we talk about planting the seed, it's really to help them awaken. You don't have to sit there and watch the flower come to the ground and then rise and then sprout to become, you don't have to do that. You just need to plant the seed in good soil and it will blossom because that's why they're there. Mm -hmm. So you can help them, as Melissa said, not be ignorant anymore. <laughs> and we don't mean that in a um, condemning way. When we say ignorance, it's just dark knowledge. They just don't remember. This is why the master on the cross said, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. It was because of their ignorance. Yes. That's, that is why. You are but a, the servant of love. This is why you're the servant of love. This is why you're the servant of love. <laughs> that is all life is. When you choose to surrender, to give up the game, to give up the dream of trying to resist the truth that is true about you always, that you are who? God. God. <laughs> oh, don't everybody shout it once. <laughs> I promise we're going to get there sooner than later. 
You would become a mere channel, a mere conduit. Let me ask you a question. How many of you really want an intimate relationship with God? How do you think you have to get there? You have to accept that that you are and that that which you are from. Yes. You have to accept image and likeness and roll with that. Yeah, but uh, the the secret recipe is that you have to be in love. Yes, and you have yeah. to what? know yourself while you're in love with self. Mm. Yes, and to you. create <laughs> and to create that love in yourself is not easy. But yes. just a go ahead, Lily. Go ahead, Sidney. Uh, but why is it that we are taught when we pray, we look up, when we want to get close to God, we go to a high place, we build high towers, you know? <laughs> well, because the preachers and the teachers have taught you that God was a far out place. Uh -huh. So everything that you read in your text has put God in a far out place. Mm -hmm. So... When you essence look up, it was really because of, I don't want to confuse you all, but in the, in the beginning when they were pyramids all over this planet in China and Asia and Egypt and Malaysia and Mexico and the Antarctica and all the places, in the middle of the chamber, the, the pyramids were not meant to be pyramids. They were meant to be octahedrons, spheres. So if you were to take the pyramid, you would actually have the same exact replica on the bottom. You would connect each dot around and then you would get the octahedron, okay? In the core is where Jesus was saying, in my father's house, there are many mansions. This is what you would all call the ninth dimension. Well, when they placed the pyramids on the earth, they would place either a jar of water or a human being because blood and water are the same. So when they would go into the middle of the sphere or the pyramid, it was how they were able to connect with the father because you've heard this before, as above, so beneath. Oh, yeah. This is where that... Um, saying comes from. This is why people look up. Does that make sense? Yeah. This is why when you meditate, you have that uplifting feeling of rising, mm -hmm. of almost levitating in your spirit. Mm -hmm. Hopefully I didn't confuse everybody, but that is, so when you look at the Egyptian pyramids and you see the writing on the walls, they tell you the story. Mm -hmm. So this is what the master Yeshua was teaching when he taught them in parables, but they didn't get it. They didn't understand the mystery of the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. So a lot of them misunderstood him and called him a devil, called him Beelzebub, called him the, the Antichrist and all these other things because of the knowledge of what he was teaching them because it went against their tradition of what they had learned. And you see that a lot right now in Christianity, traditions of men. You see that a lot in, matter of fact, a lot of religions where they hold a lot of traditions that don't serve mm. actually hinders and separates. And then it puts God so far out. Yeah. So now when we say meditate day and night, you'll know I can go within. I don't have to look up. Mm -hmm. I can look within because looking within is where I'm supposed to look anyway. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. so, can someone read the next one? Where'd I go? Uh, mm. uh, oh. You will become no more a seeker, for you will have decided to have found. Mm -hmm. When you have surrendered the last vestige of an insane possibility of contracting away from the truth, when you have given that up, love will flow through you. Mm. But notice that if it flows through you, it must first flow to mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. Therefore, seek always to receive in order to give. Mm 
Mm. Or what can you give another if you have not yet received it to yourself? Yes. You know, and that starts with the love. How can you give love to another when you have not received love from the father of yourself? Mm -hmm. that. How many have been taught to try to love, to try to do the right thing, the good thing, yet how many times have you gone within your secret chambers and said, I am unworthy, doubt, fear, all of us have. Mm -hmm. Then you wonder why your attempts to join in love with others never seem to be quite fulfilling enough never quite seem to fill the cup, never quite seem to elicit the joy that you believe could be there. Mm -hmm. Listen well. Your work, if you wish to call it that, is not to seek and find love. Looking for love at all the road plates. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it merely... Yes, it is, it is merely to turn within to discover every obstacle that you have created to its presence and to offer that obstacle to the great dissolver of dreams, the great, the grace of the Holy Spirit. So even if you're going through your own issues, this is where you can go to the Holy Spirit and ask the Holy Spirit to also comfort and soothe your broken heart or give you wisdom or give you whatever. This is where he can dissolve those ideologies or those, let me say it this way. Here's where the Holy Spirit can dissolve your fears of saying you are God. <laughs> yeah, we said it. <laughs> and we ain't taking it back. <laughs> All right. I have said to you many times that the greatest of gifts you can give is this, to come wholly to the recognition that every attempt you have made to resist being the presence of Christ has failed you miserably. Every time you deny you are God, you fail miserably. <laughs> no matter how many times you have tried to convince yourself that you are unworthy, yet does the universe find a way to love you? Mm -hmm. and to answer your prayers and give you those things and protect you and all that? Of course. Yes. Mm -hmm. No matter how many times you have tried to lock yourself into a, the space and the volume of a body, it has not succeeded. And at death, you are remembered and been confronted with the radiance of your unlimitedness. Because when you go within and you recognize your spirit, your spirit is what? Unlimitless. You have keys to the kingdom of heaven, to the kingdom of God. Therefore, the greatest of gifts you can give another is to be one who has rescinded the need to insist on the insanity of what? Fear. Yeah. Questions, comments, concerns? <clears throat> Interesting thoughts, isn't it? Very profound. <laughs> oh, my God. It makes you think. Because what it will make you do, it will make you look at, it will make you look at life from the unconditional loving eyes of God. And God has the grandest, most wonderful, beautiful, spectacular view that you can ever imagine. Mm -hmm. This is what you want to see. This is what you want to experience. This is the unconditional loving God that everybody is seeking for. Mm -hmm. They've just forgotten. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Yes. So we would encourage you to read it over. Yeah. Practice it. Tell yourself in the morning you love yourself and your God and it's okay. And then when you see another in your mind, don't tell them because they'll think you're crazy and might fight you. We want you to have a happy day. <laughs> but in your mind, you tell that other in your mind, oh, look at this beautiful God that stands before me as a gift. Why? Because I'm going to drink a seed so they can what? Awaken. Mm -hmm. to remember who they are so they can experience unconditional love so they can no longer become the victim if they're in an abusive relationship so they can no longer mourn and understand the joy in something called death where mm -hmm. they can see that I am not limited in what I call lack 
and God is going to provide everything for me because he loves me and he's going to give me the absolute best. Mm -hmm. But I have to love myself. I have to know myself. I have to appreciate myself. I have to forgive myself of all of those things that I'd hurt myself from and hurt others, mm -hmm. only or unknowingly. That makes sense? Yes. So as you take the five minutes to write, this is what it really prepares you to do is to go within and learn to love that self. Where you understand, I don't need anything. I am everything. Well, when another comes that I perceive to be in a relationship, I will love myself because now I am ready for that relationship. Oh, I am ready for this money because I have loved myself where I am unlimited. So now I am ready for unlimited wealth. Yeah. I love myself with unlimited health. Mm -hmm. now, there's not a sickness, disease, virus, or infection can in, in, ingest your body. Because now you recognize that your body is of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit because you are one with the Father. Ooh, good stuff. All yes. right. Who wants to pray us out of here? Anyone? 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 All okay. Right. I'll do it. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord, for a wonderful um, uh, learning this evening. And um, uh, with, a, with a wisdom, we're going to um, we're going to process it and we're going to practice it. Yes. Uh, and uh, we seek uh to continue to have more wisdom mm -hmm. uh, for us to be able to absorb and um, and to elevate our learning. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, and thank you a lot. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you so much. We love every last one of you more than we can express. <laughs> Each time we see you, I leave you different. <laughs> you remembered, hallelujah. <laughs> they, they like to do this one, the small one. No, well, we're not small, we big. <laughs> yeah, I like this. Better. <laughs> we got the big heart. Yeah. We'll leave the little heart for the people in darkness. <laughs> you all have a blessed evening. We love you all. And again, we thank you all for just taking moments out of your time just to spend time with us. And as you continue to bless, you all have a blessed dream, and we'll see you in the spirit world. Okay. Thank bye you, bye. 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 B